Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick tutorial on some phylogenetics analyses in R. So for this tutorial, I'll just be going over some internal transcribed uh, spacer sequences, so ITS. Um, ITS sequences are one of the standards for genetic analyses of fungi. So if you want to differentiate between two seemingly identical species or just cluster um, different species together to see how close they are, or similar rather. So the first thing we're going to do is go to nucleotide in the NCBI database and I'll use Amanita since it's one that I'm familiar with uh, and actually add ITS. So what you want to do to get the sequences, just tick mark these boxes, tick mark, tick mark. So for this I'll just use 10. And then you go up to the summary and get FASTA text. And this will generate your list of sequences, so all your um, adenine, guanine, tyrosine, and cytosine codons and up here you'll have your annotated value of which these codons belong to. So you would go to your, I've already done this by the way, um, you go to your text pad and then just copy paste and then save it to whatever working directory you want. I already have this saved into a working directory, so I'll just open that. And then I'll also attach this R code um, to the video so other people can try it out themselves. So the first thing we do is open all of our necessary packages in the library. And then you read in the FASTA file. So we want to use read DNA string set. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but I found out that this is the best method so far. So um, if you use a function, for example, like uh, read FASTA or one of the other various functions that reads in FASTA files, uh, our FASTA data is not aligned yet. So we have to first align that so we can use it in tree building and things like that. So we look at our sequences. They all have different lengths. So we're going to reorient them. And then we're going to use the align sex by the second R package to align our sequences. And what this does is it aligns the similarities between the sequences and then uh, it cuts the length, so it trims them all to the same length. Um, we can browse our sequences in the browser, so this will open it in whatever browser you use. And then we can check out all the uh, gaps, similarities, differences. And then we'll write the file using write x string set to our data frame. So I just want to reset our working directory to a new working directory, change the backslashes to forward slashes, and then run that. OK, so we'll run this and now we should have our Amanita aligned FASTA file in our working directory. So now we can read in the alignment. So we'll use the read alignment function by second R and then read in that FASTA file that we just aligned. And we can now create our distance matrix using dist alignment. If you use this on, um, on a file that doesn't have 
uh, equal lengths, it will crash your R. I found this out the hard way, so just be aware of that. Make sure you align your sequences before you use this function. And then we can turn our distance matrix into a data frame and run table paint. So basically what this does is it shows darker values as more distant uh, sequences and then lighter values as closer sequences. So you can see on our X and Y axis there's a table of our sequences and then how far or close they are to each other. And then we can start making our tree. So we use the nj function for our distance matrix class tree to turn it into a philo object and then we laterize based on our distance matrix philo object data. So you can plot trees in uh, base R and that's fine but uh, I usually prefer ggtree because it's highly customizable and you can make really nice looking trees with it. Uh, with base R you can also make a cluster dendrogram so using the height as the distances you can see how far or how dissimilar some are to each other. And then you can use ggtree. So this is a fanned plot or a daylight plot or just a basic ggtree plot. Um, but the great thing about ggtree is that you can use these extra functions like geom highlight. Uh, of course, you have to specify the nodes for your own data. This is for mine, so it'll only work properly for mine. So this will highlight the clusters. So I'm just highlighting based on these three branches. You can also add clade labels. So this will put a vertical line with a label. So let's call it cluster 1, 2, and 3. So you can differentiate between different uh, ITS sequences that may have come from different countries or some that have come from the same country and you want to just uh, decipher which geographic region has the most differences or which are have the most similarities. And then you can actually add the alignment into the branch graph. So we're going to run this line, which just makes our philo object into a new container name called tree new. And if you use this in the, in the plot without changing the names, it'll just run an error, I found out. So it says that uh, for some reason, when you make a philo object, the tip labels are not the same as the actual labels in the aligned object. So if I run the tip labels, it'll just have the first part of the annotation. Whereas in the actual value of the sequences, we can see that it has the annotated label with the actual species name and all this information. So we'll just make the tip labels as those aligned names. And then we can run our plot. And now you can see all of the different codon values and the blank gaps with our tree. Hope this helps.